Hi, Assalamualaikum and a very good morning. So today we're going to do some tutorial discussion for chapter 7 and we're going to focus on the subtopic of 7.3 which is the solubility equilibrium. And today we're going to do tutorial question 12, 13, 14 and 15 respectively. So without any further ado, let us start. So for tutorial question 12, the solubility of the silver sulfate which is the EG2SO4 is 1.5 times 10 to the power of negative 2 mol per liter. And we need to calculate the solubility product of the salt, which is our key SP. So for the AG2SO4 solid, it's going to be dissociated in order to form AG plus aqueous ion as well as the sulfate ion 2 minus. So since we have 2 AG on the left hand side, we're going to put the coefficient of 2 here in order to balance the equation. So when it dissociated to form an aqueous ion, it's going to be dissociated into a certain value. So we're going to put 2s because it has two coefficients here and then we're going to put it as s. So for the KSP, we can write the expression first in which we have the Ag plus to the power of 2 and then the concentration of another product which is SO4 to minus. And for the reactant here, it is not included because it is in the solid state. Okay. And we know that our Ag plus is equal to 2s. So 2s to the power of 2, and then our S of 4 to minus is equal to s. So 2s to the power of 2 is equal to 4s2, and then the 4s2 multiplied by s is going to become 4s3. Okay, and for our s is basically equal to 1.5 times 10 to the power of negative 2. So we're going to substitute that into the terms here. So once we do the math, we're going to get the value of ASP to be 1.35 times 10 to the power of negative 5 without any unit. And this is how we find the solubility product for the silver sulfate salt. So for the question 13, it was found experimentally that the KSP for the calcium sulfate to be 2.4 times 10 to the power of negative 4. And this calcium sulfate will have a formula of CaCO4 solid and we need to find the molar solubility of the sodium sul of the calcium sulfate which is s so the calcium sulfate solid will dissociate in order to form ca2 plus aqueous as well as so4 to minus aqueous and it's going to dissociate it to give a certain value of s and s respectively so we can write the ksp expression first in which the KSP is equal to the concentration of the Ca2 plus to the power of 1, because the stoichiometry is 1, S of 4 to minus to the power of 1, and then we need to find the molar, solubil molar solubility, which is, in, which is equal to S. So our KSP is 2.4 times 10 to the power of 4, and then it's going to become S and S. So it's going to become S2 is equal to 2.4 times 10 to the power of negative and then we're going to put the value there. And lastly, we're going to get the value of S to be 0 0.0155 molar with the unit of molarity. Because we are referring to the molar solubility. Alright. So now for tutorial question 14. Will the precipitate form if 200 ml of the 0 0.04 molar BaCl2 is added to 600 ml of 0 0.008 molar K2SO4. So in order to imagine this situation, you can draw two beaker. So let's say if you have 200 ml of the 0 0.004 molar of the BaCl2, and it is poured into another beaker that is containing 600 ml, of the 0 0.008 molar K2SO4. Okay, so when there is a mixing of the BaCl2 with K2SO4, and this is going to produce an equation where the BaCl2 aqueous will react with the K2SO4 aqueous in order to produce BaSO4 as well as the 2KCl aqueous. So from this reaction, a salt may be formed inside the beaker here, okay, due to the mixture. So we need to identify whether a precipitate 
will be formed or not from the mixing. So what we can do is that we're going to focus on this salt here, which is the barium sulfate. And this barium sulfate will going to dissociate to form Be2 plus aqueous ion, as well as the sulfate 2 minus aqueous ion. And from here, you can calculate the concentration of the Be2 plus, as well as the concentration of the SO4 2 minus. And we need to find the value of Q, okay, which, which is the solubility constant at the initial point of the mixing. So Q will then be compared with Ks P in order to determine whether precipitate is going to be formed or not. Okay, so when they mix together, where these two mixture are mixed, you know that the volume is going to change. So the total volume will be added up with 600, which is the initial, plus the 200. So the volume at the initial, at the final stage of the mixing, it's going to be 800 ml. Okay, and for this reason, we need to find the new concentration of the Pa2 plus after they have been mixed. So you can use the formula of M1V1 is equal to M2V2. So the initial concentration is 0 0.04, and then the volume at the initial stage is 200 ml. And then you need to find the new concentration, which is M2. And then your volume here is going to be 200 plus 600. So it's going to be 800. So now you can get the new concentration of Ba2+, which is equal to 1.0 times 10 to the power of negative 3 molar. Similarly, you can also do that for S of 4 to minus. So S of 4 to minus ion is obtained from here. Okay, coming from the k 2 so 4 so initially, you, you can substitute the value of M1, where M1 here refers to 0 0.08, and then the volume at the initial stage is 600. M2 is something we need to figure out. V2 is 800 ml. So the new concentration after being mixed is going to be 6.0 times 10 to the power of negative 3 molar. So now you have obtained these two concentration of this species. So you can figure out the solubility constant, which is your Q for the barium sulfate, which is the initial point after mixing. So Q is basically equal to the concentration of the Ba2 plus to the power of 1, as well as the concentration of the sulfate, which is a product here, to the power of 1. So barium 2 plus concentration is going to be 1.0 times the power of negative 3, for the SO4 2 minus is going to be 6 times 10 to the power of negative 3. So when we multiply them together, we're going to get our Q is equal to 6 times 10 to the power of negative 6 without any unit. And this value of Q will then be compared with the KSP given. So the KSP given here is 1.1 times 10 to the power of negative 10. And therefore, from our value here, which is negative 6, it is much larger than the negative 10. So we know that our Q is much larger than KSP. So when our Q is larger than KSP, we know that our concentration of the ion is very, very high. Because when Q is high, our concentration of the ion is high. So it means that this concentration are both really, really high. And according to the Lee Chatelier's principle, it needs to go to the left hand side in order to reduce the high concentration so that it can reach equilibrium once again. So, for this reason, a precipitate going to be formed. Alright, so this is how we do tutorial question 14. Now for tutorial question 15, we need to calculate the solubility of the silver chromate, which is Ag2CrO4 at 25 degrees Celsius in the pure water. So you know that in, we have a solution in which our solvent here is a pure water. And we try to dissolve the salt, which is the Ag2CrO4, which is in the solid state. And at equilibrium, it's going to form an ion, which is the Ag+, plus, as well as the chromate ion, which is CrO4, 2 minus and we're going to balance the equation by writing 2 at the coefficient here. So first thing first, we need to write a solubility equation for the 
AgCrO4 in which it's going to produce Ag plus aqueous ion as well as the chromate ion and we need to balance the equation and we're going to let S to be the molar solubility of AgCrO4 in water. So at equilibrium, uh, the concentration of the 2 Ag plus will increase by 2S. Meanwhile, for the chromate ion, it's going to increase by S. And when calculating the solubility, uh, we need to look into the Ksp values here. Okay, so the solubility here refers to the value of S, and the Ksp value is taken from the equation here. So the Ag plus is equal to 2S to the power of 2, and then for the Cr of 4 2 minus, it's going to equal to S. So we're going to expand the expression of 2S2 in which it's going to equal to 4S2 multiplied by S and then it's going to become 4S3, okay? And then it's going to be divided by 4, so it's going to become S3 is equal to 2.25 times 10 to the power of negative 12 and then we're going to cube root the value here. So lastly, we're going to get the S value which is the molar solubility for the silver chromate in pure water which is 1.31 times 10 to the power of negative 4. So we can make a conclusion saying that the solubility of the argentum chromate in the pure water is 1.30 times 10 to the power of negative 4 molar. So now we're going to repeat the same situation in which we're going to dissolve the Ag2CrO4 salt inside the dipotassium chromate solution. So instead of using water, we're going to use the K2CrO4 solution in order to dissolve the salt which is the Ag2CrO4. So here is our K2CrO4 solution. And in this solution, they're going to have K plus aqueous ion as well as the CrO4 2 minus aqueous ion. So initially, there is a presence of the CrO4 2 minus that is already present inside the solution here. So when the salt dissociate, it's going to produce the equation here, which is 2 Ag plus aqueous plus CrO4 2 minus aqueous. And we're going to use the ice table here, which is the concentration initial, concentration change as well as the concentration at equilibrium. And the, at the initial stage, we have the concentration of the CrO4 2 minus in which this comes from the solution itself. So the concentration of CrO4 2 minus is present as much as 0.005. Meanwhile, for the Ag+, plus, it is not present initially. What present is K+. Plus. Okay, so pada mulanya, Ag+, plus tiada. Yang, yang ada hanya K+, plus dengan CrO4 to minus yang datang ni daripada solution tersebut. So, when we dissolve inside the water, uh, when we dissolve inside the solution here, uh, we can say that the concentration, on, the concentration of the two Ag+, plus will increase by 2Y, which is why here is the molar solubility for the silver chromate in the solution. And then the chromate ion will increase by plus y because it is coefficient 1. So at equilibrium, it's going to be 2y. And for the chromate ion, it's going to be 0 0.05 plus 1. So we're going to write the Ksp expression in which it's equal to the concentration of the Ag plus to the power of 2 because it's because of the stoichiometry here. And then the chromate ion to the power of 1. Okay. So Ag plus is equal to 2y to the power of 2. And then for the chromate ion, it's going to be y plus 0 0.005. The Ksp is the same as given in the equation. So we can make an assumption here where y plus 0 0.005 is basically equal to 0 0.005 because the Ksp is very, very small. Okay, so here is basically equal to 0 0.05. And then we're going to expand that. And then we're going to do the maths here by dividing with 0 0.05 divide by 4 and then set the value and lastly we're going to get the value of y to be 2.12 times 10 to the power negative 5 molar. So you can say that the solubility of the Ag2CrO4 in the dipotassium chromate solution is going to be 2.12 times 10 to the power of negative 5 molar. And from the similar question in part A, uh, we can say that the solubility of the salt in the water is 1.30 times 10 to the power of negative here is negative 5. So you can say that the solubility of the salt, which is Ag2CrO4 in the dipotassium chromate, is lower because it is negative 5 in comparison to water. So, and this is because 
of the presence of the CrO4 2 minus at the initial stage. Okay, so when there is a higher amount of the CrO4 minus, then it's going to increase the concentration here and it will shift the equilibrium position to the left based on the Lee Chatelier's principle. And as a result, this will cause the concentration for the for favoring the, form the formation of the salt. And as a result, it's going to reduce the solubility. Okay, dia akan menggalakkan pemendapan menjadi Ag2Cr4 dan dia akan mengurangkan keterlarutan. Alright, so I think that's all for today's video. See you again some other time. Bye!